So now let's move on to part B. So in part B, we were asked to find xi of k. So recall that in part A, we found that the constant stuck to the initial wave function is square root of a. And now we're being asked to find xi of k, which, as you recall, is this component in our solution to the Schrodinger equation. So recall that this is the complete solution for the case of a free particle. And then in order to arrive at this solution, you need to find what xi of k should be. And xi of k, by Plantrell's theorem, is given by this expression over here. So in part b of this problem, in order to find xi of k, we need to solve this integral. So let's focus on this integral in this video. So our xi of k is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi, and then an integral from negative infinity to infinity. And then we have the initial wave function, which is the square root of a times e to the power of negative a, the absolute value of x times e to the power of negative i kx dx. So we need to integrate this. So the first problem that presents itself is the, is the absolute value. And in order to deal with the absolute value, we're going to have to separate the integral into two parts. So the first part is going to go from negative infinity to 0. And then we're going to integrate this. We're going to integrate this function over here. And then the second part goes from 0 to infinity. And then once again, we're going to integrate this function. So you see that there's actually nothing special that I'm doing here at this step. I'm just breaking this integral up in from negative infinity to 0 and then from 0 to infinity. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can remove the absolute value sign. So recall that the definition of an absolute value, so absolute value of x is equal to x when x is larger than 0, and then it's equal to negative x when x is smaller than 0. So this makes perfect sense. So let's say if x is equal to negative 1. So the absolute value of negative 1, that's equal to 1, which is equal to a negative of x, because x is negative 1, so negative of negative 1, that's equal to 1. So adopting this definition of the absolute value, you can see that from negative infinity to 0, that is the range in which x is smaller than 0. So within this range, the absolute value of x is going to be equal to negative x. So I can just replace this term over here with negative x, and then minus i k x, and then dx. And then for this part over here, this goes from 0 to infinity, and this part corresponds to the range where x is larger than 0. So within this range, the absolute value of x is equal to x. So I can just take away the absolute value sign, and then change this, as, change this to negative ax minus i k x dx. So now we have two pretty manageable uh, integrals. So of course you can take away the negative sign, and then uh, it'll be a bit easier to if, if I just group up the terms together. So I have a minus i k times x, and then over here I have negative a minus i k times x. So integrating these e terms over here, it's rather straightforward. We just retain the term. And then we divide it by the constant that x is multiplied with. And then we evaluate this from negative infinity to 0. And then we do the same thing over here. So we have e to the power of negative a minus i k x divided by negative a divided by i k from 0 to infinity. So now we need to substitute these numbers to evaluate our integral. So let's start with the start with this left-hand term over here. So first of all, when you substitute 0 into this term over here, you get e to the power of 0. That's just equal to 1. So when you substitute 0, you just get 1 divided by a minus ik. And then for the second term, if you substitute negative infinity, you see that this whole e term over here, you have this e to the power of ax times e to the power of negative ikx. So if you substitute negative infinity to this x over here, you see that this is a complex term, this is an imaginary number. I'm not exactly sure. It's hard to define what exactly this should be if you substitute negative infinity over here. But then for this term, this is this is composed of entirely real, real numbers. And if you substitute negative infinity over here, you get e to the power of negative infinity. And that is definitely equal to 0. So you have 0 multiplied by a complex number, and that is also equal to 0. So this entire term, this entire term is equal to 0 when you substitute in negative infinity. So we don't have to put down anything, anything for here. And then for this part, we do the same thing. 
and you can see that we encounter the same problem. So if you substitute infinity, you have this uh, component that's complex, the part that's multiplied to this ik that corresponds to a complex number. It's hard to decide what exactly this term will be if you substitute in infinity, but it doesn't really matter because it's also multiplied by e to the power of negative a infinity, so that's just a negative e to the power of negative infinity, which is equal to zero. So you get zero multiplied by a complex number. This whole term is going to be equal to zero for infinity, so we can just ignore that. And then now we can substitute in zero, and then when you substitute in zero, you just get something pretty similar to last time. So you get e to the power of zero, that's just equal to one. So we have, so for the first integral over here, you get, when you substitute zero, you get this, and then minus zero. That's when you substitute in negative infinity. And then for the second term here, you get plus. When you substitute in infinity, you get zero, as explained before. And then when you substitute in zero, this term becomes one. So you minus one divided by the constants in the denominator, which is negative a minus ik. And then now we can simplify these terms a bit. So for this term over here, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by a plus ik. And then you'll see immediately why we're doing this. And here you can see that these negative signs, they cancel out. And then I'm going to do something similar for this term over here. And I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by a minus ik. So the reason why I did this because a plus ik times a minus ik, that's just equal to a squared plus k squared. So you can try to expand these brackets and you see that this is indeed equal to a squared plus k squared. And then you can see that both of these uh, denominators are the same. So I can just essentially get rid of all this and then just substitute in a squared plus k squared. And then you see that when these add together, these i terms, they cancel out. So in the end you get a divided by 2 pi multiplied by 2a divided by a squared plus k squared. So there you have it. So this is going to be our desire of k. And then this result that we've just obtained is going to be substituted back into this expression. So we got our desire of k using this integral over here, and then we're going to use the desire of k by substituting it into this expression, which would give us the wave function, which is what we wanted.